Hello everybody and welcome back to another KSP tutorial. In today's video we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to build a Saturn V and Apollo spacecraft. After the build we are going to be heading out to the launch pad where we are going to do a full flight of the Saturn V to the surface of Zimon and then we will be bringing the capsule back to Kerbin. So without further ado, let us get straight into today's build. Alright, so obviously starting off in the vehicle assembly building here with the Apollo capsule, the Mark 1 to 3 Cran pod, and then I'm going to be adding a little one of those parachute deployment things and then a uh, docking port on the top of that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and grab parachutes and it's going to put three of them on there. It doesn't really matter where they go just as long as they don't like clip out of the thing because then that would look really bad. Um, then we're going to go ahead and pop a little fairing here and here's a quick little guy, a little bit of a a little bit of a footnote here, I'll be coming up in a second. You don't want it to be angled like that here. This is coming from the future here. So you want it to be a nice one continuous thing or else it won't work. You'll have issues. Anyway, back to the thing. Don't ignore how it is right now. Um, and then you want to just put the heat shield on the bottom. Just make sure you have it to slope the right way. And then a decoupler. And then you're going to want to go ahead and grab the Apollo service module. Uh, I should mention that the Making History DLC is required for Z's build. Uh, another quick note about the uh, service module. There are sometimes issues where the fuel won't feed properly to the engine. So, I mean, in this case, it looked like it was doing that, but I've had times where it wouldn't. So if you it turns out yours isn't. You might just want to put a uh, a little fuel line there just just to stay safe. Is why I just do it just anyway, just to, to demonstrate. So I'm just going to put one little fuel tank in here. You don't need a lot of fuel for the service module. And then the Making History service module is like strangely big for some reason. It's a little bit too long. So I don't know what that was. Come on, squad. Anyway, um, I'm just going to put some batteries on there. Then you can go ahead and grab some fuel cells. And fuel cells is how the real Apollo was powered. was through fuel cells, so it got to be very epic realism. And then I'm go ahead and pop a little, uh, little monoprop. Uh, fuel tank in there, so that will be very epic. Then we're gonna go ahead and close up the shroud. And now we're gonna go ahead and enable the center of mass, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab our little RCS thruster block, and we're gonna try and align. We want two-way symmetry on this, and then just put them right on the center of mass. So now that's the service module. We can get ready to start work on the lander after we do a little bit of work on the action group. So you want to just do this to get rid of the launch escape tower, and then you want to step in a board action group as well. We'd like to quickly say if you are enjoying the tutorial so far, you want to hit a subscribe button. That'd be very epic. We also have a Discord and some merch, PilotShop.com. We also got. Uh, if you want to become a member, you can hit the join button below. Also, you can become a patron. All right, quick plugs are now over. On to the lander. Hopefully that wasn't too unbearable. Uh, so the lander um, is probably the most difficult part, I think, uh, in my opinion, because squ squad did not. <laughs> there, there. So the problem with the lander uh, that I found is that the the um, the structural panels that we used to build the like the yellow bit aren't really bright. So. Um, also, you want to make sure you connect, or they're not the right size, not a, a convenient size, rather. So you want to connect the um, the docking, uh, the decoupler directly to the engine, not to the command pod. Uh, make sure you do that to the engine, and then you want to uh, make sure you connect the fuel tank directly to the engine decoupler. I just moved it down a little bit just to make sure it was going to connect directly to the decoupler, not to the to the lander module itself thing. So make sure it does that. And then I, what I do is I go ahead and move the decoupler as far up the engine as possible. Just make sure nothing is clipped. Um, and then we can start construction on the yellow bit here. So uh, there are eight little panels to the lit yellow thing in the real lander. But if you do eight-way symmetry on the smallest yellow things, uh, the yellow uh, structural panels, it isn't actually wide enough. It's too skinny. Um, it doesn't like go wide enough. So what I ended up doing is actually we uh, make it wide just to the correct width. And then there's a little bit of a gap there, right? So what you do is you just add another set of... Um, of structural panels and then what you want to do is raise them up and then we just go ahead and press the F key to uh, um, switch the mode there um, and then you just go ahead and you can line it up correctly as you can see I have done like so and then it looks majestic and magical and then it actually looks quite good this is the best way I think I found of making Apollo landers at least in, in my opinion um, there are different ways if you want to do the easy way you can just do the, the, the size bigger but you'll you'll have uh, six panels instead of eight um, which is less realistic, but it's easier. So it uh, depends on how you want to do it. Um, I should be a disclaimer. This is by no means like the most comprehensive, amazing guide to a stock Saturn V, you know. Um, 
this is like, hey, let's get a usable one that looks pretty good. Like there are people that have done like pretty ridiculous things where they have like flags and all this contraptions and stuff. And this would be, that'd be like a two hour long tutorial if I want to do that. So uh, yeah. Um, another thing is I, I do two panels down, but if you if you look at the uh, pictures of Apollo, the, uh, the the yellowy bit, the bottom stage, essentially I should just call it, is uh, just about the same height as the upper stage command module things are. Just raise it up a little bit just so it doesn't look too long on the bottom. And now it's going to be filling in the middle bit. I'm just going to spam a few, not really spam, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and put some structural panels there just to kind of cover up the middle where the hole is right there. And generally, I think you want to make sure if you look at the, you can't really see it in this shot here, but when I move the camera a little bit next, you'll be able to see, there it is, uh, the little like little fuel ring down there at the bottom of the, the limb, the mem, the, you know, the, the lunar stage, right? The lunar command pod, um, the lander essentially. Um, there's a little yellow like filtering thing. You want to make sure that your structural panels are located below that or else it'll be it'll cause crack and attacks when you try to separate the bottom stage with the upper stage. So yeah. So then I'm just gonna go and do some fine tuning, make it look nice and pretty. And then we can do just some finishing touches on the lander. So uh, we have the one small uh, Mark 1 fuel tank, which is not enough fuel. So what I'm gonna go and do, go ahead and do here is put um, some Oscar B fuel tanks on the side, and uh, it's gonna get real cozy in the in the center there. Uh, it's gonna be just about like completely clipped, but not quite clipped. So I guess that's pretty dope. Um, I do have these connected to the actual the the yellow bit, the structural panel. So that means we do need uh, fuel lines to connect the Oscar B's to the main fuel tank, so they can actually feed into the engine. Now make sure that all the lines actually connect, or else one of seventy fuel tanks won't feed, and then you won't have enough delta V, and then it'll be sad because you'll crash and explode and die and burn. Anyway, <laughs> um, then I just go ahead and clip those up just a little bit into the fuel tank just so they're not protruding a lot. And then eventually what we're going to be doing here in the next a uh, few seconds is I'm going to be actually removing symmetry on one of the fuel tanks and completely removing them as I'm going to be putting a, a reaction wheel in that place as the actual MEM module itself, the LEM, that comes with the breaking ground, break, breaking ground, whip, rip, making history DLC, uh, does not have any reaction wheels, so I just go ahead and plop a reaction wheel inside of the bottom stage, like like so, and uh, in this configuration, you'll have around 1200 meters a second of delta D, which is plenty to land on the MUN, you need about 600 roughly to land normally uh, maybe a touch more than that but now we have way loads um so it should be no problem at all uh, and to the landing legs so the landing legs unfortunately you have to place them one by one you kind of have to just eyeball the right height because it's an eight-way symmetry so if you're trying to symmetry it'll just try and give you eight landing legs you could just do eight and then you could just remove symmetry on four of them that works this works too you know whatever suits you best so um, i'm gonna go ahead and just retract the landing legs as they normally were and that basically completes the LEM, or the, the, lunar, the Lunar Lander. And now is basically just the rocket. The rocket is quite easy. It's just a lot of big giant fuel tanks and engines, and then that's basically a Saturn V. Um, so yeah, can you go ahead and put the decoupler, um, and then go ahead and get a 3.75 meter fuel tank, and I just want to get uh, fairing straight up, or rather 3.75 meter fairing, that fuel tank, and then you want to go up a little bit, and then you want to curve it in uh, just into the service module, and then go ahead and do three sides, and then turn on clamshell deploy like so. And now it's time for the S4B, or the Saturn V's upper stage, where we just go ahead and plop a fuel tank right there. Go ahead and plop a um, decoupler thingy ma bobber. And then we can go ahead and grab one singular skiff engine and engine plate rather. And then we go ahead and grab a five meter fuel tank, uh, fuel tank rip fairing. There's actually a 3.75 3.75 meter to five meter fuel tank, uh, which actually is supposed to kind of model the, the, you know, the widening of the Saturn V, but you actually don't, we want to use a fairing. Uh, I generally like to use a fairing just because um, in, re in the real Saturn V, that little widening bit area is actually the inner stage between the third and second stage. So realism, right? And if you if you basically, if you don't do it that way, you have to have the inner stage above it. And that makes the, the top bit of the Saturn V way too long. So realism, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add a fuel tank and then we're gonna go add a five way engine plate. Gonna get five skiff engines or uh, the uh, the J2 engines, what they're, they're modeling. And go ahead and plop those guys on there like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab the big boy fuel tank, the bottom stage. Um, and then obviously below that, you're gonna go ahead and want to drop in the uh, little engine mount thingy. Uh, and then you wanna go ahead and put your four or five F1 engines or mass on engines. And then making sure you're auto strutting all the way up and down this thing, because if you don't auto strut, it's gonna wobble like crazy. 
Um, and then the center F1 uh, did not gimbal, so you want to make sure you turn gimbal off. And I turned gimbal way down on the all of them just so it doesn't, you know, just so the gimbal is not crazy. Um, you can do that if you want. You don't have to, obviously. Um, and then you can go ahead and grab some some little wingy thingies here, and then you want to turn off pitch yaw and roll on those, which are not actually actually control surface. And now we can go and set up our staging. And then when you set up your staging, you're gonna notice something, and that is that we have way, 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 way too much delta D. Um, basically, uh, the Saturn V flight profile is you have the bottom stage burns, and then the second stage burns, and then just uh, then use some of the fuel in the third stage um, to get into orbit. Um, in this one, you'd basically use your bottom stage and then like half of the upper stage and then you'd be in orbit. So what I did is I just drained some fuel and then basically I just lowered the thrust of the Mastodon engines to reflect, you know, the less the lighter load it had to carry. It's up to you if you want to do that and how much you want to do, but I just do whatever you think is uh, is right. So uh, you can just check the levels I did if you want to do that. And then I left the S4B, which is the third stage, as at, at its normal levels. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add some launch clamps and then don't bother doing anything past the third stage in terms of staging um, because they're gonna be doing a lot of reconfiguring and docking and stuff in flight so don't try and stage like the lander and set all that stuff stuff up you can set that up in flight because it'll be staging and stuff but uh that is the saturn 5 fully built so now we can head on out to the launch pad going pretty quick here um and then we can uh, yeah get ready for uh, a launch here so we can admire our glorious creation and then we can light up the engines and lift off there it goes now, if you're seeing the, the plume I have, this is not stock plume, it's a mod called Waterfall. Super great mod, you should grab it. Um, yeah, it makes the plume a lot better. Um, so, uh, just gonna be doing a normal launch here. Gonna go a little bit steep here, just because we have a little bit of, we have a little bit of extra delta V even with this, uh, even with this, the uh, reduced fuel setup, so I kind of fly it slightly inefficient flight profile, because I can. So, gonna be throttling down from max two, then we're past 10 kilometers, we are going to be, uh, Throttling back up, and then the bottom stage can get ready to be staged away like so. And wait, oh, there it goes. And now we can fire up the second stage with its five skiff engines. We're passing 30 kilometers, we'll just pass around 40 kilometers. I'm gonna go ahead and hit action group one um, to jettison the uh, jettison the launch escape system, and there it goes. Uh, so I'm gonna continue to burn the second stage. Basically, gonna fly flat on our way into orbit with. Jeb, Bob, and Val on today's flight as we're just about to cross the 60 kilometer mark. Everything is looking good. Second stage is just about to be fully depleted and then we will be staging it away and then we'll be burning uh, some fuel from the third stage to get our way into orbit. The third stage of the S4B stage on the Saturn V does uh, orbital insertion around uh, the Earth, or Kerbin in this case, and then it also does the translunar injection or the burn that sends us from the Kerbin orbit into a trajectory towards the Moon which is very, very epic indeed, as you're just about to get ourselves into an orbit. Any second now, I'm gonna be throttling our engines down for Tico, third engine cutoff, I guess. That's, that, I guess that'd be what it's called. There are not many three-stage rockets anymore. It's mainly just two stages. Um, so just about, almost there, about 2,300 meters a second is orbital velocity around Kerbin. So there you go, going ahead and cut the engine, and then we're going to get ready to plan our maneuver node out to the MUN. And we want to get ourselves set up for something that is about, you know, lowish MUN orbit. Basically, I generally do anything between 100 and like 20 kilometers, 100, maybe even you can get as low as 10 kilometers if you wanted. Uh, but now we're going to do the burn with the remainder of the S4B fuel. We actually have quite a bit of extra fuel, but yeah, we can just ditch it and let it get uh, swung out into a really high Kerbin orbit. So now a very uh, iconic Apollo thing is you basically, you want to do the little reorientation thing where you pop out the lander, you're going to go ahead and f or pop out the service module, flip it around, and then you grab the lander, then you basically want to pull it out of, this, of the S4B stage, and then you're going to want to get ready to do our uh, our lunar insertion burn here. Basically, you want to make sure you have your control point set up right, make sure you have the right engine turned on, or make sure it's only one engine so you don't have both engines like firing against each other, because then that'd be very inefficient. Um, get to the MUN, transfer the crew, and then you're going to be um, starting our descent down to the surface. Very awesome looking plume. That looks great as we light up the engine and can come in for a landing on the MUN like so. Um, kind of turned out to be a really hilly spot where I ended up landing. So, well, good thing the landing legs were able to, you know, 
kind of correct for that, or we didn't tip over their wide enough base. So, and touchdown! And let's head back! So, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and make our stair staging and set up right, and then we wanna fire the upper stage and get it detached. Just gonna try and go quick here because you guys have seen Apollo mission plenty of times, and that plume looks that's pretty epic as we go ahead and get ourselves flying basically flat on our way up into an orbit and then we can do our docking with the service module we turn out to be a little bit ahead of the service module so we're going to want to be getting into a slightly higher orbit than it um so we can just kind of slow down relative to the target and then we will, uh, we will end up meeting up but it'll be very epic and we can reunite jeb and bob who landed on the surface with val who is uh hanging out in the service module like as you, as you can see so Go ahead and fire up the engine, do our little get ourselves lined up for docking. And then here it comes. Docking, fairly straightforward. I do a loud and lazy method of docking. It's the best, best method of docking, I think. Very epic. Um, fairly straightforward from this point, as long as you can know how to do a rendezvous. Um, you don't need a rendezvous. There are some tutorials. Maybe I'll make a tutorial about how to do that, but uh, here it comes. I'm gonna go ahead and do the docking, kind of coming a little bit quick, but whatever. We boink. And then we're gonna go ahead and transfer uh, the crew back in the command pod, and then go ahead and jettison the lander. And now we can get ourselves planned for a maneuver node back home to Kerbin. Plume looks great on the on the wolf on there. Um, here we go, coming back now. We can go ahead and. Get our staging set up. Make sure you want to jettison the little fairing thing on the uh, the payload bay before the fairings, or else the before the the parachutes rather, or else the parachutes won't deploy. So fairing first, then parachutes, like I did right there. And here we are coming in for a landing. All right, that is going to bring us to the end. Hopefully you have found that helpful. Uh, hopefully that kind of sounded awkward, but yeah, hope that was helpful. On screen is all the members. Thank you everyone who has become a member. Also, on screen is all the Patreons. Thanks for all the Patreons. That is going to be against in today's video. Oh, yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.